I have to tell you, I've wanted to do a video about melanoma for quite a while, but there's so much to talk about with, with melanoma. Welcome back to the vlog. Today's topic is melanoma. And when I first shot this group of videos, I kind of put it all together and it was too much information. And I can tell you after doing these videos for a while, you guys don't like the long videos. So what, I'm, what I've decided to do is to take oral malignant melanoma and make it its own separate video. But that doesn't mean you're not gonna wanna watch this video. So this video, we're gonna talk all about melanoma, what it is, what the cancer is, and just a good overview of it. And we'll also talk about some of the other forms. So dermal melanoma, which tends to be benign, but can be malignant. And we'll talk about melanoma of the toes as well. So digit malignant melanoma. A lot of how we treat some of those malignant forms is going to be really similar to the oral melanoma. So you're probably going to end up watching both of these videos. But again, I want to try to make them a little bit briefer so you can watch them in, you know, in segments, pause them, rewind them, go back and, you know, just get the information at your own speed because I know cancer is overwhelming and there's so much to absorb. So that's why I make these videos is to help you get through it. So let's break it down. Let's start to talk about what melanoma is. First things first, let's give a little bit of an overview because in this, in this vlog, I want to focus on some of the more common places that we see melanoma. But I think first we have to understand what melanoma is, right? What is melanoma? Melanoma is a cancer of a cell called melanocyte, which tends to be the cells that generate pigment. So this tends to be a cancer in heavily pigmented dogs. And we'll talk about some of the common breeds that we see it, but it is a pretty common cancer. And the places that we typically see it are the mouth, which tends to be a malignant cancer there. We can see it in the skin, which tends to be a benign location. Um, we can also see it in the digit and the foot pads as well. We can see it in the gastrointestinal tract. We can see it in the eye. Um, I should also, because we don't want to forget about kitties, and if you're watching this, you know, it, it tends to be a less common cancer in cats, but we do see it in cats as well. We can see it in the nasal cavity. We can see it in the anal sac. So we can really see it in both ends and all ends. It is a cancer when it's malignant with a pretty high metastatic rate. So as we talk about in the video, it is something that we're gonna to wanna to do those tests to make sure it hasn't spread. When it spreads, it often goes to the lymph nodes that drain the area. It can go to the lungs, it can go to the liver, and it can go to other places as well, like the adrenal glands. So we definitely wanna you know, be looking for those uh, different organs when we're looking at our things like our uh, chest X-ray report, ultrasound report, or maybe a CT scan. All right, so that's a pretty good overview, I hope, of what melanoma is. And let's move on to the next part. For melanoma, it's not one size fits all. Your dog could have a dermal skin, very small malignant melanoma that hopefully, hopefully you found early because you follow my see something, do something. We'll put a link to vlog number 73. So you're doing your monthly lump and bump exams and you're finding these these lumps early, we're aspirating them. And you know, a lot of these malignant melanomas are benign, nice small surgery, and you're done with it. And that's great. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we can have these malignant melanomas of the mouth, which, you know, are not always found early because finding cancer in your dog's mouth is not as easy. Um, and they can be highly metastatic and a much more involved, you know, treatment recommendation. Most of the skin ones are benign, but there are a subset of them that are going to be malignant. How do we figure that out? We read the biopsy report. Your veterinarian, your oncologist are going to look for certain key things like mitotic index, so how many of these cancer cells are dividing, key 67, which is a molecular marker, um, a proliferation index, so how another way of measuring how quickly these cancer cells are dividing. So those are other things that we can do to try to predict the behavior or how aggressive it's going to be. Um, right now I am treating a dog uh, in the clinic who has a malignant skin form of melanoma. So they do happen. Um, and so, you know, if your dog does have a dermal one, 
it is worth you know maybe having a consultation talking to your veterinarian about that a little bit further and again we always do want clean and wide margins and we'll need larger margins for a malignant one than a benign one what about the digit ones so many dogs with digit tumors or tumors of the toes will present for lameness or swelling or a lump at the toe and melanoma is the second most common cancer of the toes in dogs something called squamous cell carcinoma is number one so that's about squames are about half of the digit tumors that we see and like i said melanoma is number two about 25 or about a quarter of the uh, tumors that we see they are highly metastatic and so about 30 to 40 percent of dogs will have metastasis out presentation. So you're definitely going to want your veterinarian or your oncologist, your cancer specialist to uh, aspirate the draining lymph nodes, chest x-rays, and ultrasound. So remember, they can spread into the chest cavity and the lungs and into the abdominal organs as well. So you'll want to do both cavities, as we say, the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity when you're doing staging tests, staging meaning to look for metastasis. The assuming everything ha is good and there's no evidence that the cancer is spread, the treatment of choice to remove the cancer is going to be surgery and usually that will be a toe amputation. Um, and that is often something that your vet will do, but it may be something that you're going to refer you to a board certified surgeon. So talk to your, to your veterinarian about that. Um, and dogs can do really well with toe amputation. Uh, right now I'm still seeing Jessie, a uh, little schnauzer. Actually, she's a big schnauzer. I mean, she's not a giant schnauzer. She's a little bit overweight. Um, and I think, I want to say she's about three or four years out from her digit melanoma. Uh, she had a toe amputation and we've been treating her with the melanoma vaccine, the immunotherapy. So she's doing great. But dogs with surgery alone, about 40 to 55% of those dogs are alive at one year based on a, a couple of studies. And about 13 to 35% of those dogs are alive at two years. And I talk about this in other videos, you know, when you hear those numbers and your pet is diagnosed with cancer, I know it doesn't often seem like a lot and oncologists and veterinarians often throw a lot of statistics at you. I try to put it into perspective that these are aggressive cancers, they're highly metastatic and their quality of life can be great and that a year in a dog's life is like five years for me or you. And, you know, when people are diagnosed with cancer, they're often given five year survival time. So I think these are, are good numbers. This is a treatable cancer. Um, we'll go into a little bit more about chemo and the immunotherapy, but um, dogs with the digit melanoma, um, in one study, they didn't see a significant difference when they were given chemotherapy. And we'll talk about that more in the next section when we talk about oral melanoma. Um, but the immunotherapy did help um, for dogs with digit melanoma, which is not surprising um, based on how we know how this immunotherapy works. Um, and the median survival time was 470 days for the dogs that had surgery no metastasis, and then had the immunotherapy. As I mentioned, my patient, Jessie, which is just an example, um, she's doing much better than those statistics. And that's always what we hope for is that your pet will be a statistics buster and do way better than the statistics. In that study, in the dogs that had the vaccine after the immunotherapy, after their surgery, the one-year survival rate was about 60% and the two-year survival rate was about 30%. So that's a brief overview of the digit melanoma. All right, so we just finished digit melanoma. And remember, there are other forms. So I know you might be watching this because your dog had one of those other less common forms of melanoma. One of my favorite patients, Ollie, had ocular melanoma and those tend to be benign and his was malignant so you know every patient can be a little bit different don't forget i always put links below on how to find a cancer specialist and that's going to be the best way for you to get accurate information for your pet so please i always put links below so you may need to check those out and i'll always put as many helpful you know links for different things below as well so be sure to look for the next video which will be all about about oral malignant melanoma and again a lot of how we treat that with surgery um, we'll be talking about radiation and the melanoma vaccine immunotherapy will be in the next video so please join me thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you at the next video